Hello, this video covers a list of topics you should know for the scientific revolution. First, I will go over the causes of the scientific revolution. Next, I will go over the life of Nicholas Copernicus, then Johannes Kepler, then Galileo Galilei, and finally, Isaac Newton. Topic number one are the causes of the scientific revolution. Well, one of the main causes of the scientific revolution was the Renaissance. Why? Because the Renaissance had many thinkers who began to question the conclusions of earlier Greek philosophers and other people. Second, the age of exploration helped to create growth in science. There were new instruments discovered and people began questioning traditionally held beliefs because a continent was discovered between Europe and Asia that no one had known about. So this caused people to question things. The next topic for the scientific revolution is Copernicus. Nicholas Copernicus was a Polish astronomer. For nearly 2000 years, most people considered the Earth the center of the universe. This was a theory proposed probably by Ptolemy, and this was called the geocentric theory, where the sun and the stars and planets and everything believed to be in the universe traveled around a motionless Earth. But in the early 1500s, Copernicus said that this wasn't the case. He used observations and mathematics to propose a very different idea of the universe. So his theory was called the heliocentric theory, and this is where the Earth and other planets travel in orbits around the sun. The next topic in the scientific revolution is Johannes Kepler. Kepler was a German scientist who expanded Copernicus's theory about the heliocentric universe. He wrote precise mathematical laws describing the planet's movements around the sun. Johannes Kepler is also known for the three laws of planetary motion. These laws include the following. Planets move in orbits shaped like an ellipse, not in a circle. A line between a planet and the sun covers equal areas and equal times. And third, how long a planet takes to go around the sun is related to the radius of the planet's orbit. Johannes Kepler and his laws were a great influence on Isaac Newton. The next topic of the scientific revolution is Galileo Galilei. In 1609, Galileo heard about the invention called the telescope from the Netherlands. Remember, a telescope uses glass lenses to make distant objects look much closer. This was first used on ships for navigation. Galileo later decided to build his own telescope, so he learned how to grind his own glass to make the lenses. From his observations, he saw that the moon's surface was rough, and he also discovered that there were four moons that revolved around Jupiter. Obviously, there's many more, but that's what he could see at the time. With this telescope, Galileo could also see that Venus passed through phases just like the moon. The next topic in the scientific revolution is Sir Isaac Newton. Newton was a scientist and mathematician whose greatest discovery was the law of gravity. Newton, at some point in his life, saw an apple fall from a tree and it hit the ground and he realized that when objects fall, they fall towards the center of the earth. Now the apple didn't fall on his head, as you've probably heard in legends. He wondered if the same force that pulled the apple to the ground was also tugging on the moon and other celestial objects. This single force explained a falling apple on earth, but it also explained the movements of heavenly bodies in the sky. Newton called this force the force of gravity. And in 1687, Newton published a book known as Principia or Principles. And that covers some of the basic facts about the scientific revolution. If you like this video, I have other history videos you might want to check out.